Hi, my name is Rick Sanchez. I'm with a company called Tractor Tip, and what we have for sale here today is a Case 1840. We're standing it next to this uh, Case, I mean this Bobcat S250, just for a size comparison. Uh, the serial number of this machine is, I can't read it real well because it's dark, but it's, I think it's JAF028626, and I'm going to leave that last number blank. So if you'll step back, thank you, just kind of show them the size difference between. That's the only reason I'm putting it next to that one is that that's a popular machine. This bucket is up, so it makes it look like that buckle, bucket's quite a bit bigger, but it is bigger, just not that big. You can see that it's up off the ground. So the price on a new machine like this is about $35,000, $40,000. This machine has got 2,979 hours on it. As far as manufacturers go, uh, Case is number one in the world of uh, heavy construction and utility equipment. This is considered a piece of utility equipment. This unit here weighs 5,600 pounds versus this one here close, weighs close to 6,500 pounds. The widest point is actually this bucket here at five foot two and a half inches. Now that bucket is wider than the tire. So if you were to take this the bucket off, the widest point on this machine would be four foot ten inches, which is the width of those tires. Again, that bucket makes it five foot two inches. The uh, transportation, uh, the highest point is the top of that cab at six foot six. The transportation length from the edge of that, uh, that cutting edge all the way to the end of this counterweight over here is uh, 10 and a half feet. As far as the history of this unit goes, this machine, like all the machines we purchased, is an original owner, Dallas, Texas machine. It's got no rust. This is actually clumps of uh, grease right there on that dipstick, but... Um, that's that's a clump of grease too so when you anyway um, like I said it's a Dallas Texas machine it's got no rust I mean you'll see uh, surface rust here but that's from where the paints rubbed off and the rainwaters gotten to it it's it in no way shape or form is is pervasive at all we're far enough south and 300 miles from the ocean so we don't deal with salt or unless it's on our kitchen table. This machine comes from a large, well-organized contractor here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that had a comprehensive maintenance program that rivals some of the best I've seen. We, as well as our customers, have been happy with all the machines that we've purchased from these guys, and it should be said that before I purchase any machine, my mechanics thoroughly inspect it, and then I inspect it before I write a check, let me show the comparison again between those two. As far as options go, this machine has got auxiliary hydraulics, as you can see here. It's got a quick coupler on it, which is standard. That's a universal quick coupler, so this machine will pick up any, any skid steer attachment. As far as the engine goes, it's kind of hard to show you the engine without. That engine is a 54 horsepower case, uh, 4-390. This machine's got a 19.5 gallon tank, which will run you 12 to as many as 16 hours, depending on your operation. Like I said, that's just a clump of uh, mud or something. I'd wipe it, but I don't want to get my hands dirty. All the fluid levels on this machine are where they should be. This machine is mechanically sound. There's no leaks on it. Everything works. It's 
got a hydrostatic transmission that propels in forward and reverse with absolutely no problem. Top speed in forward and reverse is six and a half miles per hour. Skid steers don't have brakes, so once you let off the, um, because they're, they just don't have brakes, but they're inherently four wheel drive, obviously. Um, these tires, as you can see, are almost brand new. They're 95% easy. They're 70 uh, by 16, I'm sorry, they're 70 by 15.6 PRs. They're just regular skid steer tires. As far as things that are wrong with this machine, you know, the paint's faded. It's not the prettiest machine in the world. Um, but I'm not asking $40,000 for it either. You know, the decals are kind of scratched up. and um, The bucket's a little worn. Uh, these lights here don't work. Or Tank, did you fix those? Yeah, they work. Okay, I'm sorry. These lights do work. When we bought the machine, they were not working. So I stand corrected. They do work. So I guess about the only thing that's wrong with this machine is that the paint's a little faded. Um, the hydraulics are strong on this machine. There's no cracks or welds anywhere in the work equipment. There's very little deflection. There's no problem at all with this uh, coupling area. This cutting edge right here, as you can see, is about 75%. As far as this loader bucket goes, this loader bucket, like I said earlier, is five foot two and a half inches wide. It's one foot nine inch tall. It's two foot three inches deep. I'd rate it probably about a half yard bucket. Uh, this hinge pin right here, if you were dumping into a dumpster, you know, at full height is about nine feet. The breakout force on this skid steer is 3,000 pounds. Uh, the static tip load of this machine is 2,800 pounds, so the definition of static tip load is that this, simply stated, it's that the hydraulics of this machine are so powerful that the machine will actually tip forward before the hydraulics give out. You'll see that when I dig into a pile here in a little bit. So the lifting capacity of this machine is limited to the weight to the south of this fulcrum, if you know what I mean. So in this case, it's 2,800 pounds. Now the operating, quote unquote, operating capacity of this machine, or on all skid steers, is half of the static tip load, which in this case is uh, 1,400 pounds for the skid steer. We are going to run it in the next clip. <laughs> So this is the inside of the cab here. You see the seat. There's your auxiliary hydraulics. When you get in the, in the cab, these are the foot pedals for your auxiliary hydraulics. There's your lights. Here's your light switch. That's your ignition switch. This is a choke right here. These are your uh, is your monitor panel. I'll start the machine here in a second. Now this has got a, an H style uh, control pattern. So basically um, when you push these two levers forward, you go forward. When you push them straight back, it goes straight back. When you go like this to this uh, handle here, you raise the bucket. When you go like that, it lowers the bucket. When you go like this, it uh, curls a bucket. When you go like this, it uh, uncurls a bucket. So 
So this is called an H-style H type control pattern because you push them both forward to go forward H, both of these controls, push them back. So uh, you gotta have this down here. Here's your switch. I'll show you this, uh, that hour meter right there. I don't know if you can make that out. Anyway, it shows 29.79 on the hour meter. All the lights work. Rocking you for a seat. All the systems are normal. this machine I am not real familiar with the H style control pattern although it is very common uh, so you'll have to bear with me um, I'm not a very good operator on the on a skid steer but
Any request to hire me as an operator can be submitted to my office. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>